Hello, Matt. Hi there. What is going on? Uh, the huge, you know, it's uh, it's a Friday, it so is. naturally we are uh, congregating inside this room to talk about video games and other things. Naturally, under the banner of gamer gamers too. There's That's not the name. One. There's I mean, not you one think I know it by now? <laughs> I mean, I don't hold I don't hold high levels for you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Whoa, roasted right away, right low, off the bat. Low bar, low bar. Well, now I gotta, I gotta live up to my apparent paintball brethren. It's true. Uh, the roast factors are similar. So for night. <sighs> <laughs> I can't even meme myself. All right. Anyway, so you've already talked about what we're doing. So let's get into it of the normal rigmarole. I feel like this is faster than normal. Yeah, because I don't. I don't really. I didn't really know where to go after an over nine thousand joke, and I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I can wait. Either. You want? You want to wait like five minutes? No, we can. We can just get into it. I mean, then we might end right at an hour instead of like you know an hour and fifteen. Or... Uh, you like to think that, but some of the stuff I know we're about to talk about, my uh, I'm going to be snapping my suspenders in anger. <laughs> so, oh, you think? Let me just tell you about <laughs> these things, Matt. You see, I can't stand when fucking Blizzard does blah. It's maybe maybe when open. we inevitably do video okay you'll have an outfit where you can wear suspenders so you can do i'll, that. I'll just wear suspenders anyway <laughs> and just constantly just <laughs> oh let me just but every time i stretch them out i never bring them back i stretch them out and just snap myself with them because i'm an asshole <laughs> let me just tell you something <laughs> i just do that good old like <sighs> it burns when it hits me oh <laughs> uh. Okay. I'll wear fake glasses, too. I'll get the whole thing going. Have Maybe that's the, the stick, stick we should go for as characters. I got a bow tie around here somewhere. I'll wear the same shirt every week, too. <laughs> Fuck it. Why not? Just make the whole, make it a whole, make it a whole joke. Only be shot from the waist up enough that you can see that I clearly have suspenders on. The same shirt I wore last week and a bow tie that's the same bow tie as last week. And just constantly, just every time I gotta, I about, I feel like I gotta start into something. The rant's gonna begin. Just that'll be the key. You see me snap suspenders. Then if that doesn't happen, you gotta be worried because it's coming late. Or maybe you'll have like one snap if it's like a ah yeah um, half rant. Yeah. Or I, I don't even pull more than like an inch off my chest. I'm just like ah, I guess I guess I could talk about this. I don't know. It's, it's the same as when you hear color commentators that you can't see. But when they're trying not to talk over each other, sometimes they just do the desk tap mm -hmm. to say, like, hey, I want to say something. Shut up for a minute. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. It's funny. Did not know that, that that was a thing, but it makes sense. I don't know if it necessarily is for, uh, like, all sports, but that's how it is for, like, esports, casters and stuff. When that makes sense because they're... multiple of them and they're trying to like, yeah. just go through a game, you'll see, you they've shot it before, like, where you see casters during a game and they will tap on, like, a desk or something to mm -hmm. indicate... Hey, I want to say something. Or if, yeah. If we get a break, I got next or something. Whatever. Oh, that is interesting. Very, very Fun smart. Fact. Smart tack. Smart whatever. Uh, so speaking of smart things, what have you been up to for the last seven days? I mean, you're putting me in a corner with the whole smart lead. And I, let's not, Listen, let's I started, not do I, that. I already insulted you and went low bar. So I tried to bring you back up with smart thing. What uh, do you want? Do you want me to expect nothing or expect something? You have a fair point. All right. <laughs> so uh, what the, What have you been doing, dumbass? <laughs> <laughs> um, my week has consisted of nothing exciting, uh, as per usual. We bought, we went out, we bought a router, as in for wood. Ah, one of them wood routers. Yes, with a table. Heard a lot about them. They get great reception. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. Uh we played with that a little bit. Samantha has some crazy projects she's about to do. She'll probably inevitably cut a finger off, so it'll be fun. I can't wait for when you're here and that phone call comes. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, I got to leave. Cut a finger off. It's going to happen. So How do you do that with a router? But whatever. They're like, I, I was like, I had to give her the, the safety thing where I'm like, this is probably, because like, we have the circular saw. 
We have, you know, she hasn't uh, cut her fingers off with saw, that yet. But they have guards, you know, they have guards. Yeah, but even, they have... even with guards, I mean, I guess, the, I guess the real thing is don't get her a table saw or a band saw anytime soon because yeah. those, those are going to be much more. There's a reason mm-hmm. you have push blocks. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Um, the router is like, you know, it's got the bit hanging out and it's got no guards. So, like, if you slide off, you let go, you know, it, it'll get you. Nothing I like better than when I'm doing wood and just to let go of the piece I'm doing. Well, you never know. And I told her, I was like, this is by far our most dangerous power tool we have. It's like, you know, drill press and you're just doing it and you just go, achoo, and the whole thing starts into a helicopter spin because you're you halfway know. through drilling. Just so, saying, yeah. man. We have that to look forward to. Um, you have that to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't look forward to that message. Playing No Man's Sky. Ah. Finally finished the goddamn Artemis quest line. I can use a goddamn portal. I am... So happy for you. I'm thrilled. And I immediately went and got my fancy ship that I wanted to get. And now I don't know what to do with the game. Ah. Which is probably like we didn't see that coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Oh, what? I have a dirt hut and I did all the mines. Yeah. I think I might do an underwater base. I think that might be next. Ooh. A little underwater. Get a little little, submarine. Cruise around. A little, you know, J.J. Abrams in you. Not J.J. Abrams. um, The other one. The fucking director that's always in the damn ocean. James Cameron? Yeah. A little bit of him. Yeah, definitely. A little bit of him. Look for the <laughs> Titanic. Um, That's it for games. Just No Man's Sky a little bit. Uh, Been reading Edward Snowden's new book, Permanent Record. About a third of the way through it. Uh, it's a memoir about his life, essentially. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Do you have a memoir if you're still alive? That's a good question. That, that always just seemed weird to me. It's the same reason why. Why would you write? An, I understand an audio bibliography is technically written by yourself, but why are you writing your bibliography when you're alive? Yeah. Well, you still got it once it comes for out. For him, though, he might not be alive much longer. Yeah, he but, could get it any minute. You know yeah. what I mean? Like but when you know you see like a, an actor, just random whatever actor is like hmm. my autobiography, and you're like you. Probably still have another twenty something years. You don't want to. It's like, kind of depressing off. in a way because yeah. it's like it's like almost like a self admission that like like if you want to just kill yourself, just do it. I didn't need mm-hmm. the biography, but whatever. So that's a really that's like a really dark turn, but um, it's a good book though. It's yeah. interesting because it's like obviously it's like his about his life, and he's not too far off in age from us, so it's. Kind of bizarre to read it. I oh, say us, but I should just say me. Yeah. Because... I was going to say, one, you should say you because you're older. And then two, uh, you're older. And then three, you're still older than me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, I run into that with sports a lot where I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy's 19. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> or like when Bryce Harper, who's or 26, I think, or 27, one of the two is signing a $330 million deal to play baseball for 12 years. And I'm like, yeah, it's man, this computer won't boot. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> now he's, uh, he's my brother's age. So around my brother's age. Okay. So, um, right. it was just interesting. Like the early life, like, you know, him growing up with the Nintendo, like he's into games and like him. All doing... the Nintendo secrets that he could get. And... Yeah. All the, <laughs> Going on the internet and like you know, it's just it's just relatable. It's more relatable, right? Um, it's not like Bruce Lee's one where it's completely not relatable at all. Yeah, it's not. You know, I'm not fucking killing people with my finger and just you know that type yeah. of thing. You don't have your own punch. Or Besides for the ladies, pow pow. <laughs> <laughs> there are multiple ways to frame <laughs> that statement. And I'm happy you went with finger guns. Uh. Because there's nothing I like doing better than when I'm at a bar and I see a woman and I go, hey, and I <laughs> double gun her with the fingers. I'm just like, say, and I'm like, ah, I'm going to fucking see myself out now. <laughs> works every time. <laughs> no, of the time works every time in terms of I need to go home now. Uh, Want to so, find, yeah. find your way out of a bar faster? Just <laughs> <laughs> Finger guns. <laughs> Finger guns. I'm going to try it someday. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. Uh, dude, we can do it if we ever go to Burlington. Um, I'll just randomly look here. Bartender. Hey. Hey. You know what I want, right? <laughs> you look kind of like an old mill guy. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically how the conversation will go. Oh. What else anyway. have you been doing? Yeah, what else have you been doing? Um, anime, of course. Doing of the anime course. thing. 
Caught up on the baseball anime, Ace of the Diamonds, crushing, because now I have to fucking wait. And it's like, I picked the worst time, too, because they're in the middle of uh, some, like, they, what they call Golden Week. I Okay. Which is basically, like, the week before there's a summer tournament starts, and they're, all the teams are rushing to play each other to try to, like, gauge how where everyone's at. Yeah, but like that's not you can't stop that. It's just oh, I see what you're saying. You, that's just where you are. So now you're Jones up for the new episodes, and they're yeah, in, they're because in a, they're in a heated storyline moment. He heated storyline because the main character, who is the relief pitcher, got to pitch a whole game, you know, and the ace, the the main pitcher, playing real shitty. Coach benched his ass, so he he fucking wrecked house. All right then. And it's a high. You're on a high right now. You want to see where it's going to go. I feel you. I understand. Got to see that growth. The growth of the pitcher. His <laughs> pitches. Anyways. Um, started watching a new anime called Fire Force. It's crazy. It's high fantasy, except they're firefighters. I don't know. There's magic. It's fucking whack. They're firefighters. Okay. Oh, Here's boy. the five-second pitch. They're firefighters. They have superpowers that are crazy. And they fight dudes who spontaneously combust. How the fuck does that work at all? I, you're telling me, man. We're we're on this train together. No, we're not. <laughs> you're on the train. I'm on the train. I don't know where it's going. I'm kind of scared. We both looked at each other's tickets and went, no, I'm not doing that. You're like, ah, I guess I am. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. I don't know. That's all I've been doing, though. Nothing else. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but it doesn't matter. If I can't remember, who cares? Not me? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is to that question, but all right. Yeah, that's it. What are you doing? What do you got going on? I've been coming off a cold. If you can't, a cold. If you can't hear it. No. A bit, I'm a little I didn't notice. Stuffy nosed. Did not notice. It's, uh, it's bugging me a little bit. You seemed a little crotchety today. That's not the cold. That's just me. <laughs> well, more so than normal. You're crotchety or excitable? I wouldn't say excitable. All right. Well, excitable in an angry way. Eh, I guess, I guess, no, I guess that is crotchety. Kinda, just kind of grumpy. Like, more right. grumpier than normal. Oh. Yeah, it's the change of weather, man. Maybe. It's just, just fucking over it. And then, like, I got there's a garbage week next week, which I can just put anything out by the road and get, throw it out. And then I started thinking, I got to, like, I got to clean stuff. That's a whole thing. It's so and, fucking irritating. I, there's, it's not that I need to do it, but I, it's a good time to get rid of a lot of stuff, yeah. and I have stuff that I can get rid of, and it, it's just like a, it's a thing, you know, like adults and yeah. stuff. Dude, do I, I hate doing say, it. I can't say adulting. I've been doing it for years, but like, ah, we responsibilities and shit, man. We do it uh, beginning of the summer, and I get pissed off every time because I'm like, oh, I gotta get everything together. You gotta sort through everything, and then. You do it, and then you forget that it's got to go out, and then you have to rush to the last second to throw everything and out. See, my thing and is, then, it's going to be, I think, on a Friday morning. Yeah. So that means I prep Thursday night, put everything mm-hmm. out on the road Thursday night. But then I also play volleyball on Thursday night. So do I really want to sack volleyball for the attempt to get garbage out faster? No, like you know. And it's, then you're inevitably going to forget something, and you're yeah. going to see it afterwards, and you'll be like, "What the fuck?" And then it's going to come to you know the next garbage day in spring, and I'm going to be like. Oh, I forgot that thing again. And then the year from now, when I do the fall one again, I'm like, oh, that thing. And then six years later, I finally throw it out. Yeah. That's that's being an, being an adult. But it's I'm not going to do anything crazy. It's just like random thing. Like, you know, I got the broken, crappy mailbox that just needs to go. Like, just random things. It's not going to be any. I'm not going to be hauling what some of these people are going to be hauling out there. Dead bodies, obviously. Oh, yeah. Sh- Jimmy Hoffa shoved in a couch. Like, <laughs> be surprised. Nobody knows Jimmy Hoffa's dead up here, but lo and behold, uh, it's been that way for years. Uh, yeah. So, and yeah, I just get crotchety. Nothing really, nothing really spurned it this week. Like, nothing really got to me. But there's just moments where I'm like, I feel like it's going to be fun if I just get angry at everything. Get off my lawn, you know? All right. That's cool. Want to slap babies and I don't know what else. Kill seal puppies. I don't know. I don't know. Just violent things. All right. 
Maybe you need a punching bag or something. No, because I don't really want to punch anything. I just, I, I we'll get there because it's going to be you know as right. we were watching the Star Wars stuff and whatever, and I'm just like, oh my god, it's the same shit. It's just, and it's it's more the over everything, over everything that's happened in the last like two weeks. Uh, it's of of the world, not just yeah me life is. It's so much like fanaticism about stuff that I'm like, just shut the hell up. You have it's not out yet. You know, we're just speculating. Uh, somebody that doesn't know 100% what they're talking about is just, you know, saying things. It's one of those where it's like, man, you know, I'm so happy I deleted Facebook because it was still be 10 times worse. 10 times worse. Yeah, not doing Facebook. I highly recommend I would, that. To I people. would be out here. We would be doing extra podcasts of just me scrolling through my Facebook feed and being like, can you believe this dumbass? And yeah. then I would, it would just not be healthy. Like uh, Twitter's not, Twitter's better than Facebook for me for that regard. But at the same time, I skip a lot and I don't have some of the older people. Like, I don't know, not that necessarily is a good thing, but I don't have some of the older people that I had on Facebook that would share just ludicrous shit. Where I'm like, you clearly didn't think more than five seconds before you're like, they should stand for the national anthem. It's in the rule book. And I'm like, <laughs> fucking read the rule book. No, it's not. But that's a different discussion. That's an old, that's an old, old yeah. one that always creeps yeah. back into my head where I'm like, if you guys just fucking read the rule book, it's not actually in it. Whether or not I agreed with it isn't the point. You claiming it's in the rule book, it's not. Anyway, sorry. So games. Yeah, I've been playing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Been playing the Borderlands, Borderlands Three. Yeah, still enjoying it. Uh, I've, I've go ahead. The more I see on it, the more I get mixed messages on it. But we can, we can, perhaps when you finish it, we will. You what, can speak on it. I can see some mixed messages, but I, I think some people just forget what Borderlands was. Uh-huh. and are now comparing well, it to certain things of its time, and I'm like, I don't really know if you remember what. We'll get into it a little bit, because there is a Borderlands thing on here, but um, which I'm kind of referencing right off the bat, but I think it has a lot to do with it's more people are playing it than... There's also that, yeah. ...than played the previous ones. Um, so there's that. I've uh, been playing... I picked up Origin Premiere. Yep. Uh, I've been playing the FIFA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played Madden a little bit before you got up here. Just yep. to, like very, very little. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. I don't usually stick with Madden. I just kind of wanted to see because Check it out. I had yeah. five premieres. So I'm going to see what's up. Uh, I haven't even played that much FIFA. I've just been dibble dabbling. I uh, heard. I, I heard you were playing FIFA. Yeah, through the grapevine. Yeah. Got spies everywhere. So. Yeah. You just see when you log into Discord and see what I'm playing. No, nah, <laughs> nah, I, I haven't been in Discord. Someone actually told me that you were, they saw you were playing FIFA. Oh, I know who told you. Yeah, we were talking about we we're talking about WoW. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> scary levels when you start. You know, <laughs> you know, you know my history. That's all I'm saying. Just beware, <laughs> be careful. Okay. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> you know what I can. You know what I can do. Ah, ominous voices. Anyway, uh, so I'm playing that. I also downloaded the Plants vs Zombies game. Uh, that's going to be a the new one. Yeah. It's it. If you have a premiere, it's in early access right oh, now okay. before it comes out. Uh, I was just like, oh, I'll give it, I'll just try it out for like, probably I'll spend two hours with it either on Saturday or Sunday and be like, okay, that's what it is. And then I'll either move on or for some reason, really enjoy it. But I don't foresee that second option. Yeah. That'd be weird. Yeah. But it, it's a possibility. <clears throat> it's a possibility. I just don't think I will. Like I enjoyed garden warfare for the little bit that I played it. I think I probably put like 10 hours in and I was like, all right, cool. That's what it is. The first one. Yeah. Uh, and then I haven't really played the show. You know, I, I've kind of set you, that you, down. You, you said you were winding down. I, I was, that, so. I was winding down because there's so many other things I'm trying to play that for the most part and looking at what's kind of potentially coming and stuff like that, I'm at a point where I can set it down and I don't have to worry about like timed content mm-hmm. being in my way. Like, it'll all be there in January or whatever. I'm like, man, I kind of want to play a baseball game. I'll play. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be there. I'm not, I'm not worried. 
So I just kind of like relaxed myself to go, all right, we can do other things. Don't, you know, don't need to worry about that. That being said, uh, the other thing that, of course, I'm playing is WoW. Uh, and I'm here to officially concede the race to 60 happening uh, by Monday at 11.59 p.m. Yeah, there was no way. Uh, so the only way there was a potential of ha- it, of it happening is I would have had to ditch Todd. Because I was talking about this with him. About, yeah, about this with him, yeah. Um, I kind of, I... There was, I felt there was zero chance you were going to make it. And it was an immoral bet, kind of, I think, in a way. Because I was like, you were were foolishly taking it, and I was like, I see an opportunity here. (laughs) I mean, those are the bets you, those are the bets you should make, though. Yeah, I guess. But like, those are the bets I make at work all the time. hmm. I know I'm going to win, basically, is the bet I make. So, it, it, I knew it was foolish to begin with, but we also had some like just weird hiccups along the way. Uh, I had yeah. volleyball start like two weeks ago, so that takes four, six hours. That's taken six hours away from us. Uh, you know, we've just had – he's had family things. Yeah. But a lot of it's more been me not being around for mm-hmm. whatever reason, one thing or the other. And the only way that I would have even come close is if I ditched him earlier this week, like on Monday or something, and just played solo the whole way, the rest of the way. Yeah. And I would have had to take like today off. Yeah, it's and, not worth and it. And never stop. It's not just worth it. That's jamming. the thing. And I'm it's like, like... Eh, it's just not like I'm, I'm enjoying what we're doing. That's why I'm like, I'm, do I, I want to be there? Of course I do. Mm-hmm. But it, I can let my ego, my fake ego, take a tiny hit that I'm not going to get there on Monday. <laughs> fake ego. Listen to you over that here. That part of my <laughs> fake ego because like I accepted I wasn't probably making this before last week when we recorded. And you're like, there's no way. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it. There's no fucking way I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll, I'll keep up the act right up until the end where I'm like, there's no way I'm making that. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Well, that's good. I, I'd rather you... Enjoy the game, yeah. Then Risk not it. enjoy the game and try to do it. Yeah, that that can be done a different time with a different yeah. game. Where I'm yeah. like, something I'm gonna, you care less about. Or... I'm gonna beat this in eight hours. I just need to sit down. Like that's happened in, uh, like The Witcher and stuff. After like I'm fifty something hours in, and I'm like, I need to just finish this game. Yeah, I I just, we gotta get done. Uh, but yeah, so you know, wow. Wow, 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 wow. It's good. It's been a lot. Yeah. I don't, I don't, that's the unfortunate side is I don't really have anything that I'm looking forward to for the next month. There's not, everything that's coming out is not really like uh, something I'm interested in. So I'm just dibble dabbling in places at this point. Uh, I, yeah, I'm dibble dabbling. That's the Mm -hmm. Doug Dimidoman, the owner (laughs) of the Dimsdale Dimidome. Oh, Jesus. Where they're showing Crash Nebula on ice? Anyway. Yeah, it's uh, the wild thing's been fun. I've satiated my uh, bloodlust a few times. I've had to turn Todd's down sometimes. Other times we both just agree. It's over. They're going to die now. And so we start PvPing in the middle of the world. Because, you know, All right. they deserve it. All right. You fucking psycho. They shouldn't have stepped in my territory and killed me first. Now I'm going to make a point of it. The The worst thing I've done, the worst thing I've done in, so far in PvP was I flew into Ratchet, or I came off the boat in Ratchet, which Ratchet, you know, hordes and horde side, but that's how you get back and forth from Booty Bay, take the boat. So there's Alliance with us. Now, my usual rule is... Don't engage unless they start it. If they start it, at this point, I'm now defending myself and I can murder them. Mm -hmm. At certain points, that has been broken. But for the most part, (laughs) defend yourself. Well, this one was a uh, a vengeful kill. I was protecting the downtrodden and the weaker of society. So what happened? I was going to the the flight path. Because I needed to go down to 
Dustwallow Marsh and Brackenwall Village. So I walk over and I see a uh, Night Elf Druid, level 37 Night Elf Druid. I'm level 42 at this point. Or 43, one of the two. 43 or 42. 43. And I see this 37 Night Elf Druid. I'm just like, all right, man. Cool. You know, what's up? And I see him cast something. Not at me. He starts casting against a level 17 and level 10 horde characters. That's rude. I'm like, you have 20 levels on them. That's did they not see okay. you? I don't know if they did or not. I'm assuming not. Because the moment I saw who he was targeting, I killed him. Did he get a chance to kill them? I think he did end up getting both of them just because I, I can't save them yeah. as a rogue. Uh, and level 10, I'm pretty sure he only had to like one tap them, basically. Yeah. Interesting. So I killed him. And then I waited. And he came back for his body. And he respawned, and I killed him again. <laughs> the moment he respawned, and I was like, "That's that's I'm that's as far as I'm going to go. I want to do it a third time, but I have things to do today." And so, yeah, he spawned, and he's kind of looking at me. And I went, "Yep," and then just stabbed him again. And I was like, "You need to learn your place. We don't do this kind of fighting. Uh. Fight somebody your own size. It's not fun. I don't like. I will go fight anybody my level." Or within like five of either way, but any lower than that, it's just not. It's not. It's not. It's there's not. No there's no sportsmanship. There's no, there's no, yeah, there's yeah. no sport in it. Yeah. Which is what is what pisses me off when I see people ten levels above me killing me. Like, what are you doing here? Yeah. And it's not even if it was the later patch when the honor system is actually in the game and you can get points and stuff for it. More understandable. But that's not even in the game yet. So you're just doing it because you're bored and a dick. Like fuck off! No, oh, those things to do. They're just a wait, dick. <laughs> wait till I wait till I turn sixty, because oh, we have a hit list, a and hit we list. will go hunting. Oh wow! There are there are kill on sight lists. Jesus! There was speaking of that same incident. There was a we were killing uh, pirates in Stranglethorn Vale. Now, him and I and like two other hard players were around the area. As we're there, we see uh, two rogues, I think, show up. And then we were in the middle of a fight with the NPCs. Now, if I'm going to engage somebody, unless they've, like I said, pissed me off already, I'm not going to engage them for the most part when they're fighting some NPC. Yeah, it's, it's a like, if they're fighting, punch. If they're fighting another horde player, by all means. Yeah. Because then we're at war. Yeah. But if you're fighting just an NPC, like... It's like a sucker punch. It's why, like why would I like? Oh, okay, you just killed that guy and you're dead. All right, well that's just not. No sport in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm shooting the wounded animal. It's not fun. So I'm in the middle of a fight with a guy. Todd was healing me, and all of a sudden Todd's like, "And I'm getting ganked, and I'm dead." And I'm like, "What?" And I turn, and there's two rogues, one five levels above me, and the other one at my level or two levels below me, mm -hmm. which is a really weird grouping. Yeah. Uh, and they kill me too. And I'm like, you sons of bitches. Like I'm over this. So then we run back. Then we get killed by a hunter that was with the 47 rogue. We didn't see the, the lower rogue again, uh, right away. We saw the higher rogue plus a hunter. They killed us this time. I'm so like, it's clearly a group going around ganking. It, at least a coordin a semi-coordinated effort. So then I said, screw it. Started reading some general chat, and people are like, so-and-so, kill on sight, kill on sight, fight breaking out here, yada, yada. I'm like, all right. So I just, I, you know, start the, start the messaging. I just got killed over here. Oh, yeah, me too, me too. Okay, okay. Next thing I know, as we're running back from, we went to kill in a different area and then came back. As we're coming back, it's the two of us plus, like, four other Horde members just doing the good old, like, riders on the storm. Yeah, just safety, coming, safety in numbers. Yeah, storming onto the beach. We see the one rogue, the lower rogue, all of us, punch, 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 dead. See the other one, punch, just start murdering Alliance the entire way down the... Then they're just stealthing and running. Like, yeah, this is what happens when you try to make the fight. We're just going to show back up and kill you again. It's, not, it's like they don't get it. Your guy's name is the Horde. And my <laughs> character's name is Night Kill. I kill you. And at night, I wear my sunglasses. 
so I can stab. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's been some fun PVP moments. Mm. My favorite is when we get attacked and then turn it around on them. That is my true favorite. Oh, I'm going to take these guys out. Oh, fucking no, you're not. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Hope oh, got you a dollar. Oh, I got to be quicker than that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's basically that. You know, oh, I got you two horde kills. Hope you got to be quicker than that. As the rogue runs up, gouge, stab, 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 kidney shot, stab, 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 vanish. Oh, where'd he go? Cheap shot. Ah, stab. Ha ha. You're dead. So you're you're enjoying your roguing. Yeah, I'll stun lock like an asshole if I have to. It's a fun time. Oh, well. The best part is I still... I think I have... I'm at 44 now. So I have... I have eight more levels until I officially eclipse where I've made it in retail. I have a 52 rogue, I think. Mm -hmm. Close. Yeah. Either way, I don't have a 60 rogue, so once I get there, I'll beat it. But it's been interesting. Sounds like a blast. It can be. Other times, you get super frustrated. We did log off one night after getting ganked, and we're just like, no, we're done. We were getting super annoyed, and the uh, graveyard was on the other side of the zone. And we're like, you know what? No, just on, no, not tonight. Not That's fair. Tonight. Sometimes you just gotta pull pull the plug. Yeah, you know. Sometimes you just gotta you just gotta you know not get that heated and just take the time. There was another time. Uh, we were dying. It was like right before dinner. On I think on a Saturday or something, and we kept getting ganked. And we're like, all right, two hours, two hours. Go just disconnect out of Discord. Go do something else. Whether it's a different game or not at the computer at all, just you know, walk away from WoW for two hours. Yeah, just hoosa, hoosa. Do your breathing exercises, you know, or whatever the fucking is for the Lamont's breathing. You know what I mean? Having babies over here. Hey, hey, not that I don't know about. Am I right? Anyway, should we get into things Nate could also play right now? Yes, if new he, releases. If he wanted to distract himself with more WoW and definitely not make any deadline of any sorts. New releases begin right now. And they start with number one called Color Slayer for the PlayStation. FIFA 20 is out now for PlayStation, Xbox and PC. Football Drama, and that is Football Drama, is out on PC. I have no idea, but I like the name and I'm curious. Uh, number four. I love you, Colonel Sanders. A finger looking good dating simulator is out officially on PC. Oh boy! Sally's Law is out on Xbox. Surge Two is out on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Mario Kart Tour: The App is officially out. <clears throat> I have been playing that. Did not mention it. My bad. We'll talk about it. Okay. Vader Immortal: A Star Wars VR series episode two has come to PC and Oculus Quest. Code Vein is out for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, and Dragon Quest XI is out for the Switch. Let's go ahead and get right into the headlines with Matt doing number one. <clears throat> number one, gaming and PC hardware company Logitech has announced it has acquired live stream software company Streamlabs for approximately $89 million in Kazash. Money, money. Got that quiche. <clears throat> An additional payout of $29 million may also be made if Streamlabs, meet, Streamlabs meets certain established revenue growth targets, which is interesting. Uh, this acquisition follows several years of partnerships between, between the two companies for compatibility between Logitech's gaming hardware and Streamlabs' streaming tools. In a blog post, Streamlabs has stated that no change will occur to its current software offerings and that its tools will remain free. Nice. Yeah, cool. Interesting. Interesting. Logitech. Weaseling in there. Uh, see what you got over there. Uh, like a piece of that pie. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, I think they said something like uh, 80% of Twitch people use That's Streamlabs. Right. Streamlabs, Stream Elements, OBS itself. Like, mm -hmm. And then, I mean, there's XSplit and some other ones too, but yeah. Yeah. I use Streamlabs. I haven't you know, never used you know, it. You know, all those times that I stream. <laughs> Am I right, folks? Uh, listen, at least you have done it a couple times. That's true. And I did say I was going to stream Cat Quest. Meow. Yeah. Yeah. You should stream Colonel Sanders, finger licking good dating simula simulator. The only way I do that is if you stream it with me and we go get a bucket of KFC first. 
That sounds amazing. <laughs> we got to get a bucket and then just... <laughs> what? I'll, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll be there with like a gravy and straw, just like... <laughs> Basically, be the carbon thing yeah. where we just rip the skin off, dunk it in the gravy, and shove it in our mouth, and just throw the chicken out the window. <laughs> you could do it. That'd be great. Now, uh, if I had a door on this room, I still could because I could just take the screen off this and huck it right out the window. Yeah. How much do I want to commit to the joke? Not that much, though. <laughs> I could do a green screen window and just whip it through that into some like tarp collecting receptacle. It just sounds so gross. Like, uh, like just the, the greasy, like slimy. That's not even the part that bugs me. The part that bugs me is just taking the skin, the <laughs> seasoned skin, and then dipping it in like mashed potatoes and gravy and then just eating that. Here's the thing, though. And then taking the drumstick. Have you ever thrown a chicken drumstick, like a cooked no skin chicken drumstick? I feel like that would just be so weird to me. And I'd be, I'd be mad at myself. It'd be like throwing a pizza at somebody. Who does that? It's delicious. Just eat it. Yes, you would die afterwards, but eating just the skin dipped in gravy would be so delicious. Oh, it'd be delicious because here's what I would actually do while we're on this subject. You peel the skin off, try to get it in one big sheet, right? So it looks like a bat wing. I don't know if you know that <laughs> joke, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You get that, so it's just one big sheet, right? Mm -hmm. You lay that sheet out inside up so your crispiness is on the bottom. Then you take some of that... Mashed potato gravy. You'll do a little, you take the mashed potatoes and the gravy, put them together. You mix that around. Get a good, get a good healthy mixture going. Yeah. Then you take a spoonful of that, put it on top, and then roll the skin up as if you were having a a fried gravy mashed potato <laughs> mashed potato like ball, and then just pop that. That thing has to be delicious. Has to be. There's no way I'm wrong. 5,000 calories <laughs> each bite. <laughs> oh, I mean, that stream alone would be our food for the day. Oh, yeah. That would oh, it'd feel so terrible. Afterwards. Even if it took us two hours, we couldn't do anything else because unless we're going to go become Michael Phelps and swim for 27 miles, there's no way we're burning those calories back. Oh, no. I'll starve myself for three days afterwards if we need to do it. Probably wouldn't even the be other, able to. You'd go into any, a coma, like a food coma. It's not even that. It's not even the food coma, right? Think about it. We would have to... We're so far away from Streamlabs. <laughs> we would have to be drinking so much liquid to offset that sodium level. It would be insane. We would have to have like the Poland Springs gallons and just double fisting them in order to have that much water going through us. Honestly, what I might do is I might get the inverted like uh, office oh, yeah. five gallon things and then run the tubes from those into a soda can hat and straight into my mouth. So I have two five gallon tanks constantly supplying me with water, basically like an IV for my mouth. Sounds like a plan. Oh, somebody sketched that up. Uh, anyway, number two, a new report from sensor tower has put Mario Kart tours day one downloads at over 20 million. Additionally, sensor tower reports that player spending has already reached $1 million. Approximately one-fourth of launch day spending on top Nintendo mobile revenue plat or performer Fire Emblem Heroes. That's a, that's a mouthful. So let's just say that... Uh, wait, what? What? One-fourth of launch day... Does that... Does that, does that, does that, does that, does that, that My understanding <laughs> of that sentence structure... <laughs> Please help me out. Is that it hit one million in the first day, which was one fourth of what Fire, Fire Emblem, Emblem did. Heroes did. Okay, okay. So which, Fire Emblem did roughly four million dollars yeah, in the first which, day. Which okay. in in that stat blows my mind. Right, but that one I can I can believe a little, little bit more, and I'll exp I'll explain why I guess. Uh, I just think there's more more to buy in the Fire Emblem games than ah uh, okay. Anyway, uh, this does not include revenue, interesting enough, from the four ninety nine Gold Pass subscription due to a free two-week trial offered to everyone who subscribes. For comparison, Pokemon Go's first day saw 6.7 million downloads, and Super Mario Run reached 4.7 million during its iOS-only launch. I, I mean, I've, I think I played Super Mario Run. Yeah, I think you did. It's not that good. Anyway, sorry. Um... None of that's really surprising. I mean, Pokemon Go was kind of the one that like broke the floodgates as far as like right. So it's not surprising that it didn't do a large launch day. No, compare comparatively, right? 
Still though, twenty million first day, not bad. And, they, and they've been touting this one for a little while. Yeah, so. yeah. It's 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 fun. I enjoy it. I know? mean, if this one didn't have big launch numbers, then Nintendo should it would probably be, just. If it wasn't over Super Mario Run, you'd have a problem. If it wasn't over ten million, I think honestly you'd have a problem. Or well, we're still talking ten million, so you wouldn't have a problem. But oh, under ten million would one would make you wonder like did they did something go wrong? Yes. Anything uh, to add about tour? Uh, no, I mean Kart tour Mario. Kart I haven't tour. spent a dime on it, uh, but I I enjoy it. The so other than the five dollar game pass, which is paid monthly, uh, the only thing that's like a bundle in the store is a twenty dollar thing, and mm-hmm. then you can buy gems, and gems just like can unlock other characters and whatever. But I think there's only a finite amount of that. Okay. So that would explain like the cap of spending because I guess even if you technically could roll fast enough and get everything, you m- and I haven't gone deep into the systems yet, but I can assume that if you did that, there would just not be a reason at the moment to continue to buy stuff. Maybe mm-hmm. there is, maybe I don't know about that, but all right, there it is. Number three. The Nintendo Switch Lite has sold over 160,000 units during its first week of sales in Japan. Uh, The figure comes from Media Create via Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmad. He's shown up left and right lately. Uh, And were originally reported at 114,000. However, these figures fall well below the 300,000 forecast by Citibank. And Nintendo stock has fallen to its lowest point in eight months, down 4.37%. Based on the original 114,000 figure, uh, Citibank analyst uh, Minami Munakata, whatever. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Butchered it both times. Said the initial impression is negative. That's classic stock market nonsense. Uh, Despite the knee-jerk share price drop, uh, which comes after just one week of sales in a single region, uh, the Nintendo Switch Lite has been well-received by critics. Typical stuff. Oh, this product's good. Oh, it's not selling as much? Oh, boy. In one region? Yeah. Uh, Which isn't known for quickly buying things for the most part. I know. And we're still reaching Christmas season when Switch Lite sales will once again... Go nuts. There's like a weird thing though, where like I've talked to a, a couple people who are like, oh, Switch Lite, yeah, I'm interested in it, or like, and they're not people, they're buying it as a gift or something like that. Right. When I say it's $199, they are like, they give me this face, like I freaking kick their dog. And I'm like, it's a Switch for $199. You realize like the 2DS and 3DS were like a similar price point we're, when they came out. $199. Yeah. And I don't get like, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. Like, yeah. I I would like to call me next time, like FaceTime me or something. The next time that somebody says one ninety nine, and I'll just talk to them from wherever I'm currently am and go, "How the f- who do you think you are? One ninety nine, cool. Pay three hundred dollars for the regular Switch. What? I don't understand how you think that's a loss at any point. Yeah, there's some you weird. Mean, you mean this isn't thirty dollars like those Sega things? Yeah, that's that's what. What? what? People, man. People. I don't envy you this season. Number four. Take-Two has announced Borderlands 3 sold 50% more copies in its first five days than Borderlands 2, which makes it the fastest-selling 2K title to date. Further indicating the shift away from retail, the publisher reports that 70% of all copies sold during that time were digital. The highest percentage of downloads have ever... The highest percentage of downloads have ever taken for a multi-platform title released, both physically and digitally, by 2K Games. It also marks the highest number of pre-order titles for a 2K title, highest-selling PC title, and has generated more than 14 million hours of content viewed on Twitch, more than half of what Borderlands 2 achieved in seven years. Going mainstream. And it was an Epic Store exclusive. Yeah. There was nothing better than watching people getting banned off r slash fuck Epic for posting, yeah, we should really, you know, boycott Epic sells more than ever. (laughs) It's 
It's very interesting, though. It is. It kind of proves the point that, like, the you know the whole vocal minority thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, yeah, like vocal minority has been proven for I don't know how long, but I know what you mean. Yeah, it's a good it's a good recent example of it. Mm-hmm. Scream, 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 scream. Oh, I want to play it. Yeah, I'll just there was a good one. Like I'll just wait for uh, you know it to come out on Steam. Oh, my friends are all having fun. Oh, and I'm playing it. Like the yeah. the naysayers break down essentially. The, no, I'm not doing it. Hey, stop having fun thing. The, kind of the hey, stop having fun, but the um, like the mm-hmm. seven, like basically the seven stages of grief mm-hmm. that turn into the seven stages of acceptance and playing. Like, yeah, I'm not doing it because of this. You know what? Not because of this either. Oh, my friends already did it. I'm still waiting the year. Oh, they're having a lot of fun. And now I'm playing with them. <laughs> I can't get too far behind. Like it's just uh, crazy times we live in. Like I get it. I get it to an extent. Yeah. But like you're just being silly. Yeah. It's a fine line you gotta walk there. It's uh Yeah, it is. I don't know. I don't know. It just kind of proves that Epic's business plan is is working. working. Yeah. You mean we don't flood? Ah, never mind. Not doing it. Not doing it. Uh, there'll be plenty of opportunities, I'm yep. sure. I'm sure there'll be plenty of things for me to say. <clears throat> save it now. Number five. Manchester City announced a new collaborative boo. partnership with boo. FaZe Clan. Boo, Man City. Boo. Sorry, repeat that. FaZe Clan? FaZe Clan. Thank you. <clears throat> partnership with FaZe Clan, but boo, Man City. Uh, the club says, will quote, bring the two audiences together in exciting new ways, end quote. The details are a bit vague, but City says that the two will, quote, create engaging content with talent and players as well as, uh, as well, <laughs> oh boy, it, that's a terrible quote, create enga- <laughs> engaging content with talent and players as well as hosting exclusive fans events in the U.S. and around the world, end quote. Um, they plan on launching limited edition co-branded retail products on the esports side. City and Phase will be bringing their existing FIFA players together in a shared training facility. The fate is, wait, I'm so confused. Manchester City has FIFA players? Yeah, it started a couple of years ago where uh, like the top FIFA players, and I think they even started doing uh, like because there's a mode where you can play with 11 people or whatever. So I think I know individually they started signing players or whatever to like compete on the behalf of them at the FIFA tournaments or whatever. So you went there as the representative, the same way that you would go for phase or optic or cloud nine or whoever Mm -hmm. you were there representing man city or Liverpool or Southampton or Mm -hmm. Bayern Munich and Dortmund and Sevilla and Real Madrid and, the uh, fucking Roma. Do I need to keep just naming teams? I, I, I get, I get, you get what I'm saying. I get what you're saying. <laughs> I got it after the first one. Oh, God. but I know you wanted to flex on me with your. I wanted to flex your, a little your, bit. Your, FC, your soccer knowledge, FC Porto, your football Celtic. knowledge. Oh, coming out of the oh, Vanarama North League, Preston North End. Sorry, uh, <laughs> this is why we need video. <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, just doing this with no muscle. Uh, oh, it's a lot of flexing where there's nothing to flex. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's so they started doing that, and I think they've started doing uh, like signing multiple people now. Of, and I think they even did start signing. Like I said, I think they started signing like teams for if uh, I think FIFA was going to start doing like the team competitions the same way that you see. Have you watched a Forza competition? No, fucking so weird to me. They have F one and Forza competitions. F one, Red Bull, Mercedes. And Ferrari all have F one yeah twenty nineteen teams. The Ferrari team is dark and house yeah. right now. But like those guys have video game teams. What's also weird, speaking on that same thing, is the the younger Formula One drivers all get online and race in simulators yeah. and Twitch stream it. Yep. And they just did. There was a clip, three of them was, just did a twenty four hour of Le Mans race together. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Is so weird. Like, there's it's it's a very funny world currently where that's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, Madden's done it for years, where certain players when they do their 
Madden, like the trip to the Super Bowl and like their whole big Madden competition. Yeah. They, I think they have 30 players or whatever, however many teams there are. And each player is representative of a team. So they're wearing their jersey and everything to, you know, push on for, it's usually like one fan or whatever. Like whoever's the top ranked of that community is that chosen, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, the only thing, the only problem stopping it for baseball, honestly, is that it's a console exclusive, I think. Yeah, I could see that. But there, I could easily see some type of thing. The MLS has it. MLS signs players. They have the EMLS Cup. I have the, I watched it get played, and I have the scarf from the event. They, but their rules were, they each, like, I guess league has different t- kind of rules. The MLS one was that, because they play with the ultimate teams. Mm-hmm. So they still have all these cards and craziness and whatever. But the rule was that I think that you had to have one or two MLS players on the field at all time. So you, that's how it was the MLS league. You still mm-hmm. had to have MLS players. You couldn't just yeah, you know, play the world. I get what you're saying. But that's I think we reported on it last year when the FIFA World Championships were happening and mm-hmm. that 16-year-old won everything. Yep. I watched him play and I was like, I... Yep. It's the world we live in now. I'm not getting there at any point because he's disgusting. But yeah, it was, uh, it's, we're getting there. It's basically going to become that. Yeah. We're going to be fighting war in VR because we just will be tired of real life. <laughs> we're like welcome, slowly moving towards like, welcome to the Wally existence and welcome to whatever we're all is. fat we're moving around in chairs. <laughs> What's that game that I can't think of? What? That's basically the world. Like, it's not Elite Dangerous. It's the other space game that constantly has wars and crazy shit. Eve going Online. On. Yeah, Eve Online. We're just gonna start doing everything in Eve. All or right, I guess. whenever Star Citizen comes out. It's never coming out. Wally. Wally. Luigi. All right. Basically <laughs> the same voice. Let's move on to number six. In a partnership with Oculus VR, Respawn Entertainment revealed Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, a virtual reality take on the classic World War II franchise. The game was announced with a 2020 release date on stage by Mike Verdu, the head of VR and AR content at Facebook and the Oculus Connect Developer Conference at the Oculus Connect Developer Conference in San Jose, California. The Oculus partnership was first announced in 2017, just prior to EA's acquisition of Respawn. However, given EA's ownership of the Medal of Honor franchise, that deal opened doors for Respawn and the Facebook-owned VR platform to tackle the historic battlefields of Nazi Germany with the Medal of Honor name attached. A trailer for the title shown off at Oculus Connect shows off first-person VR gameplay that looks realistic with two-handed reloading of classic World War II firearms and closed-quarters combat. It's like I feel like the closest we've come to a triple A video game on VR. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how the gameplay actually is and not just cut together in those segments like that. Yeah. Uh and as I was telling you downstairs before when we watched it, if you watch the trailer, the guy has a grenade thrown at him and catches it out of the air and then throws it back or throws it away. And I want to know the first time when they're like real war simulator that they watched Frank next to them as they're like grenade. And Frank just stood up and was like, Nope, grab that. And then just hucked it back at the enemy. It's just like piss off and just throws it back at them. Yeah. And they're all just staring at him like you're a psychopath or the same thing where they shoot with the shotgun. They take that trench shotgun and shoot it out of the air in the flight. And somebody, same thing where they see your grenade coming. He's just like, no, and just like <laughs> shoots it out of the air, and I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I could. That's that one's more. Plausible. That one's at least slightly more believable to me, mm-hmm. but not somebody just going, yeah, nope. Like basically the old, uh, like throwing knife mm-hmm. or any like throwing weapon out of old kung fu movies where something goes flying by them and they just kind of grab it and then all of a sudden just turn and stick it straight in somebody's forehead, yeah. like the old tomahawk moving. Yep. And just. It's like, no, no, I don't believe that happened at any point, but I love that it's an option. The only thing they were missing was uh baseball, you know, baseball yeah. bat with the trench shovel. Yeah. Well, even with the <laughs> trench shotgun, if they just grabbed it by the barrel and turned around with the butt and just batter up and then just swung the back end of it and sent it to the yeah. enemies. 
uh, it goes back to the other thing they didn't show, and I wish they had. Have you seen the problem with uh, war in VR where the guys are at the gun range and the guy's just standing there? <laughs> And the other guy looks over. Well, not the one where you shoot yourself. The one where his teammates clearly walking around too. And he reaches out with his. The teammate reaches out with his hand and just takes his clip out of his gun and puts it in his gun. And the guy has no ammo now. Yeah, it's like yes, it's so good. <laughs> the only thing that um, they didn't show, and I'm curious how it's going to work, is like how they tackle movement. Yeah, because they they showed the thumbstick controller, so I don't know if that's what you're moving with, mm-hmm. or if you're even if you're walking, or are you doing the teleporty thing? Right, it looked like walking because mm-hmm. there was there were some segments where they were clearly moving forward. Mm-hmm. But is it that, or is it like an on rail side to side? I don't, you know. Yeah, we'll see. Be interesting. Once again, just give me the cabinet arcade shooter. I don't know why this is so hard. Put me on rails. I show up to a scene. I play House of the Dead 2, and I go bang, bang, bang. And then you transition the scene, and I go bang, 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 bang. Like, yeah, House of the Dead would be And a then I go bang, blast. bang, 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 bang. House of the Dead, House of the Dead 2. Man, I, I got some fucking time on House of the Dead 2. That's all I'm saying. You open up that cabinet. You flick that thing to get yourself the quarters, and then you just never stop playing. Number seven. Crazy Taxi broke if you put more than nine credits into it. Anyway, sorry. Never, never did the Crazy Taxi cabinet. Yeah. I was never good at Buck Hunt. I was okay. I mean, I wasn't... I never, like... I was okay at arcade games. I never, like, put the time in. House of the Dead, I was all right at. The Cruise in USA and, like, Fast and the Furious cabinets. Oh, I fucking wrecked those. I demolished. I had a, I had a save Rush file. 2049, man. I love that I don't game. think I ever played Rush 2049, but Calypso's Cove up in Old Forge had Fast and the Furious cabinets. Had two of them. So when we got bored, we'd go over there and play. And you could pin save mm-hmm. your cars and your status. So we'd plug in, punch the pin in, continue our progress. Yep. Oh, we're so good. Oh, so good. So the first time I I, re, I used to go around to the different Rush 2049 cabinets in, in our area. Mm-hmm. And I would always get the fastest lap at the, the first track. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, whatever. It's local. They probably reset the machines all the time. Like, it's not a huge group. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I knew I was really good. When I went to fucking Cedar Point in Ohio and smashed the fastest lap at the Cedar Point one, I was like, oh, I, I'm good at this. Like, <laughs> this is good. But, you know, obviously. Do you remember you how much you smashed it by? I don't. It was probably like a second and a half or two seconds. Like, it was it was enough to be like, oh, okay. Like, but not enough to where I was like, I'm the best in the world. Um, <laughs> I, like, I like the idea that it's in Cedar Point in an arcade with maybe six people in it there's probably more but I like the idea that it's only six Yeah, you just do that and you stand up and declare I am the greatest person to ever live <laughs> and then just like walk out of the arcade never to be seen again and that guy has no idea what the fuck you're talking about until they like ten minutes later go Hi, anybody what no and they go over and look at the scoreboard and they go my God, he's amazing. Well, the issue was, is I would do that stuff. Like, you know, Cedar Point, fastest lap on this arcade machine. And like, you know, oh, that's cool. I'd be, But no one, I was never with anyone who like appreciated it. So it was always like really anticlimactic. Man, I have not met anybody to appreciate my gaming achievements. <laughs> so I, I know it's, it's sad. I'm like, oh my God, I got to Snapchat this to somebody. Hey, oh my God, look what I did. Oh my God, gaming thought, am I a funny nerd? <laughs> or just like. <laughs> You don't understand. <laughs> I've been in prison for 10,000 years. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Number seven, Microsoft is starting to Let me to tell accept- you the tragedies that happened at Camp Taraho. Microsoft. All day. All day in a while. I just talk like a torrent, like an asshole. Just, you would not believe. <laughs> Garrosh Hellscream will betray you. Do you know what happens in Deathwing? He flies around and kills all of us and my people lose their earth. Jesus Christ. Uh, (laughs) Microsoft is starting to accept registrations for its upcoming Project xCloud game streaming preview. If you want to test xCloud, you'll need an Android game. Android game. You'll need an Android phone or tablet running Android 6.0 or above with Bluetooth 4 support, a Microsoft account, and a Bluetooth-enabled Xbox One controller. Uh, Microsoft is launching a new game streaming app that will be available on the Google Play Store, but only beta participants will be able to sign into the app. Uh, Microsoft hasn't put a specific date on the xCloud public trials, other than saying it's October. And the company is keeping this initial preview small and select, even down to the number of games that xCloud 
X cloud testers will be able to play. Something weird happened in my throat there. I didn't like it. Uh, the hey, games, oh, that's what she said. <laughs> the games will be Gears 5, Halo 5 Guardians, Killer Instinct, and Sea of Thieves. I surprisingly don't care. And I think it's just because, like, we're getting bombarded with all these streaming services. And I'm just like, ah, you guys figure it out and show me something that's cool. That's honestly where I'm just like, all right, yep, that's another one. Add it to the list. Somebody tell me why I should actually get this. And once again, to my phone, I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. For me, I just don't care. Oh, I could sit downstairs and not be, why? I don't care. I don't yeah, care. It's, it's kind of interesting because as I get older, I it becomes... You don't want to ruin the experience by playing on like a phone or something like that. You'd rather just wait, sit down at your desk, you know, like I'd rather make with a, day a drink, it. you know. I get myself a drink. I wrap myself in a nice blanket. I'm only wearing boxers. You yeah. know, Max is hanging out. It's a good time. We're all just relaxing. And if I have to move out of that chair, I'm pissed. <laughs> This is my moment. Yeah, I'm not the trying only... to. I'm not trying to play on the go. I'm not trying to play while I'm getting out of work, walking to my car, whatever the fuck the case may be. Like, well, yeah, if I lived in a city and took subways everywhere, it'd be a different discussion. But yeah. I don't, so yeah. I don't care. But that's me. I understand. Same. I'm not the world, contrary to my own beliefs. We haven't even got it to the state of play yet. You wait. We'll get there. Number eight. It appears Batman Arkham Origins developer WB Games Montreal is teasing its new game. The studio tweeted on September 22nd for the first time in more than four years with what looks to be a cryptic teaser for a new project. Then on September 23rd, the studio posted another teaser with a tagline that says, quote, capture the night, end quote. That teaser is accompanied by a series of quickly changing symbols that could imply the latest threat to Batman will have a face. <laughs> uh, Did you miss a W? No, it's right on my screen. Top line. Very top line. I'm not seeing the problem. You will have two face. You don't see T O face? I, I'm so confused. Two. Yeah. I got what you're saying. <laughs> my I grammatically blew my mind. I the latest <laughs> foe that Batman will have to go up against. Yes. Because Two Face is a fucking enemy. So I okay. immediately was like Now I get what you're saying. I thought you were, okay. I thought you missed that it was Two Face or a like a like oh, I I read face and thought person. The person is a face. Yeah. What? No. Oh, we mean to go up against. It. Okay. Jeez. Oh. It's been a, it's it's been a long week, people. I'm crotchety, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that means my grammar no work good. <laughs> uh, should we get into Sony State it's of Play? Hat. It's honestly the hat. The hat's what's doing it. All right. Well, let that hat ride out on the. Okay. Throw it. Throw it out of the room. Um. So Take Sony that hats. Sony Hello State of Play, as we all know. Do we? <laughs> We're all going to know. You all um, know now. Here are the headlines from the State of Play. I'm going to skip the first one. Uh, Civ 6 is going to be released on PS4 and Xbox One, but, you know, uh, on November 22nd. Give Gandhi nukes. Give Gandhi nukes. Give. I love that Switch got it before PS4 and Xbox One. Not surprised. They're like, oh, Switch can run it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there'll be a new game called Wantam, Watam, from creator Kita Takahashi. I prefer to call that Watam from okay. now on. Watam. Watam. Uh, there was a campaign trailer for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Which Modern Warfare had backlash that we're not talking about. Hey. Yeah, I didn't... Um... I kind of was relying on you to and to bring that in if you wanted to. So loot boxes are bad. Is that and, what it was? Loot boxes? Because uh, there was talk that they were doing guns and loot boxes again, 
and bold move. <laughs> and everybody ripped them for it. Yeah. And then I think it was a Treyarch dev or somebody came out in like a uh forum post or something and it was like don't believe people that are just trying to get uh you know the rumor mill going or whatever and i'm like there's smoke there's probably fire yeah and you guys have fucking done this before and especially if you come out and say if you come out and say that you better not do that because you either went Oh, my grave's only five feet deep, but every the the thing is six feet. So da, 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 da. here's the thing: <laughs> these people aren't stupid. Uh, in that way, if they weren't planning on putting guns in loot boxes, and then that rumor got started and started wrecking house online, they would come out and say, "Hey, guys, that's not true. We're not putting guns in loot in loot boxes." We're but putting- they didn't. Yeah, and the other best part would be, hey, we're not putting guns in loot boxes. We're putting them in magical enterprises. <laughs> and it's like, no! <laughs> what if we put them in spontaneous crates? <laughs> what were they called them? Spontaneous? Uh, no, it wasn't spontaneous. It was magical something. I don't remember. Whatever. I um, mean, I, here's, here's, you know, fart glitter. That's what they might as well put them in. You figure out what that means. <laughs> Uh, they showed L.A. Noir the VR case files, uh, and it's available for PlayStation VR. They had a v- VR sizzle reel, but I uh, if you have not watched the good clips from this, they are great. Are it's great? not from the PlayStation one, but I mean, just like if you've seen the L.A. Noir VR stuff, where the guys dancing into the mirror and stuff. <laughs> no, but oh, I've got to show you after to... this. LA, I'm going to make a note. You keep going. Uh, Sony released a new trailer for the remake of Medieval, uh, as well as a demo that they dropped. You know, right. Now on the PlayStation Store. Um, speaking of this PlayStation Store, uh, another little tidbit that I didn't throw in here is that Sony is now selling consoles and accessories and whatnot directly from their website. Somebody's smelling GameStop blood in the water. Exactly. And it's feeding time. Uh, there was another game announced called A Rise, A Simple Story, which was a cartoon action adventure game. Um, First off, I want to be clear. That's called Arise, a si- colon, A Simple Story. Yes. Just a weird title. It is. Same thing like on the Epic Game Store this month, or right now, right now. There's a game called Everything, mm-hmm. and the titles was Everything is Now Free on Epic Game Store. Through a lot of people. Bad bad article writing. I remember or that. good article writing. I do remember that one. Uh. Sony announced Humanity, a hard-to-describe game coming from Enhance, the studio behind Tetris Effect. I wish you had just stopped at Humanity and I'd have been like, bold move. <laughs> yeah, have you watched that one? Nope. We're going to watch that one. I just I, like, the, so, I like the idea that just Sony... I'm curious what you have to say about it. I just like the idea that Sony announces Humanity. Like, Sony has announced Humanity. Welcome to Humanity. That is all. Continue that's a, on that's a Devolver Digital move right there. It is. Welcome to their new press conference. Uh, Sony announced a limited edition Death Stranding PS4 Pro bundle. Uh, The console is white and is covered in black handprints. Uh, The most eye-catching part of the bundle is the controller, which is modeled after a uh, baby pod, the BB pod, which is that stupid thing with the baby in it. Um, And also Death Stranding has gone gold. So fun fact, did you actually look at the controller? Because in the left side of the controller is BB. I did not see that in the, the in the in the hand grip part of it. Really, there's a very tiny like BB with its head down towards you. Interesting. Yep. Let's Somebody had zoomed again. in on it. They're like, "The fuck is this?" <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting because the controller does look kind of cool because the top half's translucent yeah. plastic, and it's then the bottom the, it's got the like LED ish glowing yellow. Yeah. Light, so, um, and then we are into the Last of Us Part Two. Let's begin. Uh, it's coming out February 21st, 2020. End of the year. (laughs) There was a trailer. It was like a minute and 40 seconds. You know, as you, you can probably imagine what the trailer was. It's the last of us. Um, after the state of play though, uh, Naughty Dog released a statement related to the multiplayer component for the last of us. Quote. After backlash. Yes. People were not happy. Yes. I didn't give a shit, but I mean, go ahead and get your quote. We wanted to address multiplayer in The Last of Us Part 2. As we've stated, the single-player campaign is far and away the most ambitious project Naughty Dog has ever undertaken. 
Likewise, as development began on the evolution of our factions mode from The Last of Us Part 1, the vision of the team grew beyond an additional mode that could be included with our enormous single-player campaign. Wanting to support both visions, we made the difficult choice that The Last of Us Part 2 would not include an online mode. However, you will eventually experience The Last of Us Part... Well, I fucked up. Uh, event, you'll eventually experience the fruits of our team's online ambition, but not as a part of The Last of Us Part 2. When and where it will be realized is still to be determined, but rest assured we are a big fan of factions as the rest of our community and are excited to share more when it's ready. Interesting. It is interesting. Um, Next spring sucks. There's a lot coming out? There's a lot coming out. Busy time. Yes. So uh, Busy time. Yeah, that's The Last of Us. Do you want to say any more about it? I mean, what is there to say, though? I mean, like... Nathan Fillion is Joel. Rewatch the trailer. Anybody that's watched the trailer, go watch it again. Nathan Fillion in the final shot is Joel. I I don't know how much clearer they can make it. They, It's obviously Troy's voice. We know it's Troy's voice. Yeah. But holy shit, does it look like they modeled it after Nathan Fillion? And at the same thing I said to you, I'm like, oh, they're setting up for The Last of Us movie that they're never going to make. Because the same thing's happening with Uncharted movie. It's yeah. just spinning its tires. I'm a little... Not that it's bad. That's not a bad thing, but... I'm a little worried about The Last of Us after this short trailer. And this is just me stringing stupid shit together and, you know, worrying about nothing. That's what we but, do here. Uh, uh, the game apparently is going to be on two discs, which means it's going to be massive. Over 100 gigs. Um... Probably. There was a lot of stuff reminiscent of Red Dead in there. The horses, the winter, approaching the cabin. <laughs> the, the moment we were in the horses in the winter, I was just like, I already did this. And I wanted to kill Dutch and Micah then. <laughs> Don't make me do it again and regret not killing them immediately. Um, and that whole first thing that you... Arthur! <laughs> <laughs> that, that was actually probably my best Dutch. Oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, it, it's just... there's There are a lot of... What made moments the last of us, I think a part of what made the last of us so good was that it's, it's focused story. Like the fact that it was linear. Yes. It was very much a, uh, we're going to tell you a story that yeah. you part, that you directly participate in much more than you participate in a telltale game. Yeah. So if they go open world on this, I'll be, I don't know. I, I could see him still doing it linear, but just slightly larger linear. Mm-hmm. So but you to actually encompass... have multiple paths you could take to get somewhere rather than Maybe. just, no, you need to get through this building situation. Like, no, you could actually miss something by going to the right of that tree than the left of the tree. Maybe. It's just hard for me to comprehend that what could warrant over 100 gigs if it... You Textures know, alone. I mean... I guess, but... It's Naughty Dog. They know how... Like, they're very capable of... How big was Uncharted 4? Not remotely close to that, I don't think. Here, let me... I'll look it up. I don't you, know if you You look wanna. it up, and I'll, I'll discuss just kind of uh, open-endedly. The thing... I mean, textures, size, and then... I, who knows? Maybe they're pulling a ton of cutscenes. Like, their cutscenes are rendered really high. That alone could do it. Say the game has... Say they project like thirty hours, right? They're like it'll, you know. Well, we we anticipated to take thirty hours to beat. Naughty Dog. It could take sixteen, maybe. I don't. I don't know if they ever come out with a time or anything like that. But if they're projecting that, you could assume two hours of cutscenes, maybe, or an hour of cutscenes. So that that alone could be a couple of gigs. I'm just hoping you find the information we've been looking for. About 50 gigs. So about 50 gigs. Mm -hmm. And that was 2015. Yeah. So in four years, they could have potentially doubled the size. So you're thinking it'll be just high-resolution cutscenes and textures? I'm I'm betting they, they did their damnedest to high res those cutscenes and who know it could be fucking uh 
was it the old Republic or whatever that had how many giant files for audio? Yeah, because they it was because they were doing live orchestra and yeah. yada yada. Everything was voice over. Right, they could run into a similar problem where just they they went for such a high quality experience that they went up res everything, really crisp large audio files to make sure everything pops here. Like the game could still be Last of Us long or longer, mm-hmm. and still just be crammed with so many details and textures and yada yada that it just takes up so much room so it won't look like star wars jedi fallen order oh god i hope not which brings us to our next topic which is random shit are you just taking time you want me to take it i don't know yeah you can go ahead right. i forgot that i did the last one unless there was something else you want to talk about with the last of us uh no buying it yeah i definitely will yeah yeah i think we're i think we're both in regardless just uh I, it's one of those games that I can rely on. Like, I'm not worried about it being bad. Exactly, and it's, it's less risky than Death Stranding. It's one of those rare games to where, like, Samantha watched me play all of The Last of Us and absolutely loved it. Yeah. So she'll she'll be, be invested. She'll yeah. be wondering. She'll be asking you if you bought it yet by yeah. the time it comes out. Exactly. Number ten trailers and other shit. Let's uh, let's roll backwards. Sony and Disney are back together. Kevin Fahey told Variety, quote, I am thrilled that Spidey's journey in the MCU will continue, and I and all of us at Marvel Studios are very excited that we get to keep working on it. Spider-Man is a powerful icon and hero whose story crosses all ages and audiences around the globe. He happens to be the only hero with the superpower to cross cinematic universes. So as Sony continues to develop their own Spideyverse, you never know what the surprises the future might hold. End quote. Moon Knight and Spider-Verse confirmed. Anyway, sorry. All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's move on to the next thing. Uh, interesting. You know, mom and dad made up. Weird thing. Yeah. Uh, Marvel's Kevin Feige, again, is reportedly producing a Star Wars film. Matt, immediate thoughts? Uh, my immediate thoughts was uh so his the statement his statement was generally linked basically was like oh kathleen kennedy's great um you know we're thrilled to be able to work with her she has so many good projects coming up blah 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 i kind of feel like disney is like all right star wars is shit in the bed over here bro can you can you fix this can you come over can you can you come put the superheroes down can you come over here and fix this that's my my assumption. My gut reaction was no. Yeah, I mean, not, do I not want because I dislike Kevin Feige? He done great, great things with Marvel. Marvel, but I'm worried we're reaching the too much phase. Oh, we are. No, that's like the... if we're not already there. We're about to jump off the cliff. That's what post th- episode nine is going to get real bad. I think they're they want obviously they want to monetize Star Wars the same way that they would Marvel. Which can you imagine? It, like I love Star Wars, but in its current guise, its current selection of characters, its current direction, if they made twenty something Star Wars movies, would not be a Star Wars fan anymore. I don't. I I would probably still be a Star Wars fan, but it would have to. They would have. They can't do it the way they're doing it now. They would have to give it to a Kevin Feige person and go. You have ten years to fully tell all these stories you want to tell, and you are King Dick. We're not yeah. giving this to eighteen different directors. Well, that's the that's that's the problem. I think is they're bringing like Kathleen Kennedy is in charge of Lucas Films and Star Wars, right? And she obviously has not crafted the world that Marvel has crafted. Right. And I feel like he's going over there to try to assist, which is not going to work. Like, No, it's going to be... There too many hands too in many the cooks. pot. Yeah. Too many cooks. Too many... Oh, co- my God. That's a, whew, that's a video people haven't seen in a long time. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely going to be that, I think. But it's it's so needing that at the moment like that's the it's the part where it i don't want it to needs say, I don't, change. i don't want to say that because i don't want to see what we just talked about where it's gonna to be too much and then go i, I don't want to watch this anymore yeah but 
it also needs that direction if they want to keep actually turning out good content and not turn yeah. Star Wars into the DC universe. Like there, there is a sh- very bad chance of that potentially happening. And if n- episode nine doesn't like, cause as far as I'm concerned, Mandalorian doesn't count. Mandalorian is not dealing with the blockbuster movies that we're all talking about. Mm-hmm. I think Mandalorian, the Mandalorian is very much a test though. That's the, I think it's, I think it's definitely a test, but it's its own. It and the movies do not correlate as close as people would think other than them being both in the Star Wars universe. But if episode nine does not end like with everybody going, okay, I understand. Yeah. They're going to be in a world of hurt and have to, it's the same thing I initially said when after, was it before eight even came out, they announced that Ryan Johnson had three more movies Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, fuck, no. No, he does not. That does not make sense at all. Because once again, they were like, oh, but he's also not on for nine. And you're like, wait, what? Not the, the whole thing. The, way too many cooks in the kitchen. And there needs to officially become the one person that goes, okay, you and us have this 10-year, 13-year, whatever. Boom. This is what we need to tell. These are the stories we all want to tell. We want to tell a bunch of Star Wars stories. You know, we want to get the Revan movie that people would want. We want to have Revan be our Captain America. Like something mm-hmm. like that, where they have a known character that people have been clamoring for, that they make three stupidly solid movies out of and can build like a not a true Avengers out of mm-hmm. Star Wars, but a these are the characters you need to care about and they do have a moment where they will meet. Like you will have a civil war where people are actually fighting each other and stuff like that. They could, they could build towards that again. Yeah. Not the terrible way. Like one through three did it. They could actually develop characters that you want to care about and then actually have the fights that those characters are leading actually have a Sith person. <laughs> I speak with a list. You got the fifth person. That's going to go and, oh, God. The Sith, whoever it would be, versus the Jedi that you've watched both do different things in their own movies to then come together. And, you know, there's yeah definite actual potential if they could storyboard it out and settle with the same people for eight years and not go, huh. Spielberg gets one. Abrams gets one. That guy over there gets one. The hobo we saw on Hollywood Boulevard gets one. Uh, Ryan Johnson, you get a one and a half, but we're going to fire you during your second one and we'll put somebody else on to finish it. Cause that's just going to kind of get weird. Uh, and Nathan Fillion is Jar Jar Banks. Like, I don't know, like just the weird, weird things. We shall see. Uh, number three in this topic, new wow cinematic question mark. Matt wrote, uh, Nate is not pleased. Nate is like, whatever. Nate's done. Okay. All right. Do we need to go into more about that. Every time somebody dual wields, they die. Reinhardt, Varian, Varrock, Illidan. Yeah, it's just, they're all going to end up dead. Stop dual wielding. Same thing happens to Star Wars. Just stop. Don't do it. Also, it's too powerful. That's why. Makara, I know it has been done successfully before, but Makara, every time they show it to the non lore reading fans, has, law, has been problematic and has never been not cheated during. I challenge you to Makara, magic, laser, laser beam, laser beam, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Like, I just, no, nope, no, nope. just don't do it. Just kill you got to kill. It's a val- valuable life lesson. Yeah, don't challenge anybody to Makara. Because they will cheat and kill you. Or not know what you're talking about, depending <laughs> on who you challenged. Don't go to the bar and, you know, find the guy in the room and be like, I challenge you to Makara. It would be, be even greater if he did know what you were talking about. Yeah, and then he just threw a bottle in my head, and I'm like, that's not how this works. <laughs> Cheater! And then the number one, Star Wars Jedi colon Fallen Order I'm, trailer. This is my WoW Cinematic Universe where, yeah, it looks like shit. This is great. That's all I have to say. It, it honest... Uh, quick back to the WoW Cinematic, because this is going to have relevance. I'm an apologist for the WoW movie that exists. 
because I enjoy it. It's my, it's the not like great fan service, but it's like, yeah, I want it. Just give me, give me the, give me the slight bit of crack and I can scratch my neck. You got, you guys got any more of them cinematics? Like, but because they did that weird live action mix and every time I watch a cinematic from them, I'm like, holy shit, this looks so beautiful. Just do the animated movie. Why is this so hard? Warcraft is in your 15th year anniversary in November. If you don't announce an animated movie at BlizzCon this year, oh, I'm going to be psyched up. That being said, you have the movies that exist in Star Wars that are already there. But you guys can't animate a cutscene to save your fucking life because your textures are terrible. It's just the skin textures. I don't know what it is. Their faces are were done in the NBA 2K face scan, but whoever the artist was on their clothes did their time. <laughs> It's just so weird. It's so weird. They got Mass Effect Andromeda faces. That that one chick's eyes are the size of her nose. They're just like, yo, you ever seen my eyes bug out of my head <laughs> like that? <laughs> just like, oh, no, stop looking at me. Look over there, please. Just turn your head that way. I can't look at you right now. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. And then she's got, no, there's like literally... You can see the change. We we discussed this when we were watching it. You can see the change from where her neck stops to where the detail starts immediately in her clothes. All detailed, wear patterns on leather. There's strings coming out of it, marks where she would have definitely gotten scratched. Everything looks good. Then you look back at her face and you're like, it's brown. Well, <laughs> did you just. Did her you face just, is made out of putty. Was there just circles <laughs> and you hit fill and MS paint? Like, I'm so confused. Now, I don't know textures. Technically, right? I know that they look bad. But I don't know how to make them better. I understand that. I'm not the dev. But they look bad. Yeah. It's jarring. The the faces immediately are just like, oh, yeah, Andromeda had these problems. Whew, boy. Well, uh, it's, it, it, uh, I guess that's just what we're doing now. Yeah. And I love that they can't stay away from Vader. No. Like... We're going to tell a story about right after this. Here's all these characters you haven't seen except for in Rogue One randomly. Okay. Oh, great. Vader breathing. Oh, great. I will be okay with it if the whole time... Because Darth Vader did hunt the Jedi. That was his thing. But this is what we talked about. Your exact great play for this movie. Or for this game. Mm -hmm. Vader actually hunting him. But it fucking isn't going to be. It's not. Disappointment. Yeah. You're What's not- probably what would be nice if it happened, I'll settle for this, is if the whole time he's getting chased by these inquisitors and he's fucking them up and everything's going well for him, and at the end of the game, Vader shows up and just kills him super easily. Thank you for saying exactly what I was thinking. I was like, I hope he says kill him at the end. Yeah. I don't even care if you put up a slight fight against Vader. Yeah. But what I want you to do is not be able to put up a good enough fight. Yeah. I want you to put up a fight to the point where it's like you are such a child and he's just toying with you the entire time. Yeah. And you maybe get like one good hit in, but with a fist, you're not going to touch him with a saber. We all know you can't yeah. do it. And then he just goes, eh, I'm, I'm just done with this. Like one of those like three part <laughs> boss battles where you think you're making progress. And then all of a sudden he's just, all right, I'm, I'm bored now. Yeah. And just like kills where you. they run the story in such a way that you are basically fighting Vader as the distraction for your team to do something. And so you're at least trying to kind of egg him on. Yeah. Because Vader would be egotistical enough to not see what was happening at that point. So it would be understandable that you could keep him at least. And then he'll just hear like a siren or something, knowing that a breach happened and he needs to leave and then just kill you and walk away, which would set up for like game two or whatever. Yeah. And then game two, do not bring that guy back. Leave him dead. Yeah. Bring, a, fo- bring a different Jedi in. Yeah. And then they get murdered. Yeah, and then every time you bring in a different Jedi, tell me, they're not a Jedi. <laughs> they're I'm not a real Jedi. <laughs> I'm not a crook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Jedi. The Jedi don't exist. I only touch the powers of the Old Republic. Look at the symbol over here. Me carry a lightsaber and move things with the Force, but I'm not a Jedi. <laughs> they granted me a seat on the Council, but not the rank of Master. I don't understand. <laughs> like, <sighs> Anyway, I think that's really it. That's it. That's all I got for this week. Anything else? Nada. Perfect. We'll see you guys seven days. Bye-bye.